Today we're covering Deathstroke right here at Comic Storian, where we take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. And then we read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Back at the New 52, there was a pretty cool storyline known as Deathstroke God Killer. And today we're going to bring you the full story of that, as we covered it years ago right here at Comic Storian. Not much more to explain, let's get into the storyline that we covered here on the channel back in 2016. Slade Wilson is Deathstroke, the Terminator, the world's greatest mercenary. With the line of work that Slade does, it requires him to travel quite often, and it allows him to make friends that he wouldn't normally make at home. Like Tiggs, for instance. He's been the middleman for these operations for about a year and a half. And even though Putin himself asked for Slade to return, he never did. Because this next kill will make it worth it upsetting him. Slade heads over to Russia to meet with his contact, Angelica. And it doesn't take long to kill Pusim's men. And all that's left now is Pusim himself. Upon killing everyone, though, Angelica finds a phone, which apparently transmits a frequency only Slade can hear. Or so says the big gray guy. Slade looks at Pusim and tells him, Time has not been kind to you. And he just tells him, Shh, and listen. The sound of your precious mind being broken into. Slade's eyes widen as he can't move any part of his body. Angelica tries to call out to him, but before she can, Pusim stands up and punches through Angelica's face. Pusim tells Slade to talk. And even though he struggles not to, Slade says a series of numbers and letters. As blood begins to drip down his face, Slade tells him, I will kill you. But using his own swords, Pusim begins to cut and carve into Slade. Just as the last stab comes down, Slade grabs the blade and pushes it back, causing the hilt to go into Pusim's mouth and out the back of his head. Slade stands back up, knowing that he needs to get out of there before backup arrives. And then he hears the soldiers moving in as he's bleeding everywhere. Helicopters fire into the building just as Slade escapes. And as he hits the ground, the soldiers move in. An explosion goes off and through the smoke, Slade rushes in, stabbing a soldier in the face, thinking how armor only offers full body protection, making the face the most efficient target. Heads begin to fly as Slade makes his way through the army, but above the helicopter fires two missiles. The missiles level the area, and through the smoke, Slade shuffles out and up to the roof. Pusim watches, telling him, Run, Deathstroke. Run. A short while later, Slade makes his way through the alleyways looking for him, and he finally walks into a building. He looks at the old man and he says, I Ching, right? And the man tells him, Sit. With no strength left, Slade falls to the ground, and the man tells him, Or lie down. Sixteen days pass as Slade begins to open his eyes and I Ching tells him that he has exceeded his expectations in regard to his healing. However, their business is not over. It is now him who is indebted and he will collect when the time comes. I Ching begins to leave and Slade calls out to him stating, Something's off. Way the hell off. Slade gets up looking much younger and now he has both eyes. With I Ching gone, Slade begins to wander around the Ukraine fortress of Deathstroke. He then hears a voice call out to him, and then he sees a man sitting on a throne. Slade swings his sword, demanding to know who he is, but the sword passes through him, and the voice tells him that he is just a hologram. The man with the mask tells him that he's sorry, but Odysseus' image startled him, and he figured he would have to see with his two eyes his next target. The man says that he may call him Red Fury, and currently, Slade, you're a dead man, and as you can see, your little hideout has been compromised. Red Fury goes on to state that he recently hired him, but he won't have any memory of it. They agreed on a mission so sensitive that even he could have no knowledge of it, because of which he personally administered a drug which would cause him to gain temporary amnesia. But in case he would like to know about it, he can drink this fancy truth serum, and it will bring those memories back. Slade asks why Odysseus tried to kill him, and Red Fury tells him, well, those numbers that you sped out to Pusim, I am one of those numbers along with others, and now we have to stop Odysseus. But before Slade can ask any more questions, more of Odysseus' soldiers appear. Slade quickly suits up and starts to slaughter the men, and when he runs out of ammo, he pulls out his swords to add a personal touch. After cutting down the rest of them, Slade hears a moan for help. He pulls off the man's mask and he tells him, I got some questions. And he begins to pour that truth serum into that man's mouth. He then asks the man, what does Odysseus want with me? And the man tells him, I'm not sure, but you're needed for an important reason. One that can make men into gods. Where is Odysseus? And the man says, in front of you, I am one of his many eyes. Without getting any more information, Slade shoots the man. Elsewhere, though, a man walks through a crowd of Odysseus' followers, and a hooded woman tells him, Deathstroke still lives. The man tells her not to worry, Lady Shiva. He will find his old drinking buddy, and Bronze Tiger will tear his throat out. After escaping, Slade sits wondering about what happened back then. During that mission, 
and he decides to drink the true serum that's left. He then tells himself, accepting a drink from a stranger, I've done riskier things. Everything around Slade begins to change, and then he sees himself killing some of Odysseus' men. Next, he runs into a cave shouting that he is coming for him, his son, Jericho. Jericho tells him to just leave. Anyone that gets close to him has died, and Slade tells him, I won't. And Jericho then asks, What's the matter with you? You left your family behind. So Slade tells him, I left for your own good. You and your sister Rose. The vision goes on with him breaking Jericho out and killing more of Odysseus's men. They begin to try and recapture Jericho, but a green light begins shining on them. All of the men's heads then begin to explode. The two continue until they find a man, Odysseus himself. And Jericho says that that's the man that they have been making him help by taking his life force and bringing him back from the dead. Odysseus then tells him to come closer, his children. Let us discuss the power generated by the three of us. Slade tells him, no thanks. I'm not sure how you got the hell out, but... And Odysseus interrupts him, stating, my poor misguided son. Slade shoots Odysseus, and Jericho says, he did it. After all of these years, he did something for him, even killing his own father. And even still, that won't change things between them. He's not leaving here with him. He has his own plans. Goodbye, dad. And then the green light begins to shine again. Slade starts to wake back up in one of his safe houses to gather supplies. And as he goes outside to call for help, the phone is shot out of his hand. A voice tells him that only one other guy in the world besides him knew about that shack, and he ain't it. Slade looks back, stating that it looks like neither of them recognize each other. Tiggs. Tiggs says, it's Bronze Tiger. No one calls me Tiggs. The two draw their weapons and they lunge at each other. And they hit each other back and forth until Slade pins Tiggs down, ready to punch down on his head. Red Fury's voice then tells him to go easy on him. He's on their side. You just don't remember Deathstroke. A little while later, Red Fury explains that the visions he saw did happen, and it was in fact his father, Charles Henry Wilson, who was the Odysseus character. The modifications that were done to his genetic structure, Odysseus is the source of those mutations. Red Fury then goes on to state that his sources now state that Jericho has turned up in Gotham two days ago, so after they are done debriefing their friend, Bronze Tiger, he'll arrange for them to leave. Over in Gotham City, a phone rings as someone is being beaten to death with a baseball bat. After finally killing him, Harley answers the phone stating, Hello, Amanda. I'm just finishing things up with a child killer. And as the conversation goes on, she says, Why is that SOB coming to Gotham? I'm gonna rip his head off. He sold us out to the Russians, and no one betrays me or the Suicide Squad. Back over in Russia, Red Fury explains that Bronze Tiger has been a part of their operation for several months. He was approached by the League of Assassins to protect Odysseus, but after Odysseus was killed, he was supposed to turn on the League. So now, they'll just make him think he killed Deathstroke and report back. As Red Fury pushes the button to unlock his mind, Tiggs begins to struggle, stating, Kill! Kill! Her! Red Fury tries to shut down the process, but Slade stabs Red Fury with a truth serum vial and states that now he wants to hear the truth from him. Red Fury turns back stating he just forced his hand. He's sorry, but he has to hurt him. As the two of them begin to struggle, Slade asks, who is the woman, Tiggs? And he rips Red Fury's shirt off, and that's when he sees a woman's bust. The woman then takes off her mask stating, take it in, she's a woman and Bronze Tiger is supposed to try and kill her, remember? The woman then explains that her name is Kendrell James, and she works with a group called the Dead Bastards. However, before Slade can question any further, another voice then states that he will explain things from there. Out from the doorway steps Victor Riez, followed by Angelica and Ai Ching. Victor says that the CIA believes that the new being his father has become has the capabilities to cripple nations. He has the ability to infiltrate the minds of people, and they want to destroy that power. Normally, his telepathic bond with Jericho is what makes him unstoppable, but right now, with them apart, he's vulnerable. Slade agrees to help, but first, he'll go after Jericho and make sure that he's safe. Then, he will go do what needs to be done. Victor tells him good. He'll get him to Gotham, and he'll send Bronze Tiger back to deliver the appropriate message. Over in Gotham, a group of thugs begin to surround Jericho in a dark alley. He tells them that he doesn't want any trouble. Please, leave him alone. And then a voice tells the thugs that she would listen to him if she was them. He can make your heads explode with just a look. She, however, prefers the medieval methods, and the woman jumps out, cutting down the thugs. Jericho calls out to Rose and tells her that they should leave before they get into any more trouble. Once the thugs are dead, she tells him not to worry. She's going to take him to someone who can fix him, and she will not let anyone else hurt him again. Elsewhere in Gotham, Harley shouts, I can fly! All I have to do is believe! And Slade tells her, 
Pretty sure that's not gonna happen, as she's just laying down in a moving dream. Slade then goes on stating that he was hoping to talk to the rest of the Suicide Squad so that they could hear it from him, but that deal with the Russians went wrong and he had to make it look like he was betraying them. The squad was in danger, so he sacrificed himself to do it alone. But that's all in the past now, he needs to find his daughter, and she's going by the name Ravager. Harley says the name doesn't ring any bells, is she a backstabber like you? Slade then says, look, I need to find her. She normally leaves body parts lying around. Anything resembling her work? And she says, yeah, I know a place. A little while later, Harley takes Slade over to an abandoned middle school, and Slade notices the lack of body parts. Harley asks, what, do you think I'm gonna stab you in the back? Either way, there's nothing behind this door as she throws herself in front of it. Slade tells her to move, and he punches through it and finds the body parts, but what stranger is one of his swords is in it. Harley tosses ahead of Slade, telling him, spoiler alert, you've been set up. Nobody betrays me. Then a voice tells him, your reign of terror in Gotham is over, and out steps Batman. Without much talking, the two rush at each other, punching back and forth, and as the fight goes on, Slade sees himself losing the battle very quickly, and then he realizes why. It's because he has both of his eyes. He sucks using both. Slade manages to push Batman back, and he tells him, I don't have time for this. I'm trying to look for my son. Batman stops for a moment asking Harley, what is he talking about? And she just tells him, I don't know, it's probably crazy talk. But with that, Batman asks, is there something that you forgot to mention? And Slade cracks him across the jaw. Harley says, fine! He has a stupid son, he's in trouble. Who cares? Kick his ass! Batman gets back up and the two exchange punches to the face over and over until Batman finally kicks Slade down. As Batman stands over though, Slade quickly tosses him back on his back and then picks him up to see Batman smiling. Bruce uppercuts into Slade as Harley slams her hammer down on the back of his head. As the fight goes on, Harley tells them, you guys can go all night, but I gotta go. There's a bounty on Sunny Boy's head. So here is a parting gift. Slade and Batman both stomp, and they look at a bunch of ticking presents, and then the entire building explodes. Once the smoke clears, Harley looks through the rubble to see Slade's hand, telling him, for the record, I did believe you about the whole not portraying us thing, but I already had this whole thing set up, so... And then the arm reaches out, grabbing her by the throat. Slade tells her to start talking some truth. Where is Jericho and Rose? She tells him, I put some feelings out and it turns out Rose has been working with Penguin on the side. I can go ahead and take you into town and we can look for him. Elsewhere, over at Gotham Harbor, Jericho and Rose wait for the man that she told him about and she tells him not to worry. He's one of dad's old friends. As a car pulls up, Pusum steps out and Jericho doesn't trust him. He can't see into his mind but he can feel his aura and it's real evil. Pusum then takes out a phone stating, I have something you probably want to hear, as suddenly Jericho is unable to move. Rose runs in to kill him, but before she can swing, Pusum's body explodes! And a voice tells her, Jericho can't hurt anyone now, not even himself. Her grandfather is here to make sure of that. Not long after Slade and Harley show up to where Pusum's severed body is laying, and Slade tells her to be careful. Harley says that it will take more than this to scare her, and then Pusum's head jumps up, latching onto her arm. Slade starts to laugh. <laughs> as Harley beats the head against a wall, telling him, help me already! Suddenly, the rest of Pusum's body begins attacking, and through the struggle, Harley manages to kick Pusum's head off. Slade stabs his head with the end of his stab, and he tells Pusum to be or... And Pusum tells him, go to hell! Slade electrocutes the head, telling him, it's your choice. Where did Jericho and Rose go? Over at the airport, Odysseus holds Jericho and Rose hostage, while Shiva says that they should kill Rose, and Jericho shouts for her to leave her alone. His eyes begin to glow, and Rose asks, what is he doing? And he says, something that he should have done a long time ago, and Ending this, blood begins to drip down on his face as he tries to destroy his own mind and Odysseus tells Bronze Tiger to put the mask on him. Soon the life force from Jericho begins siphoning into Odysseus as Rose is forced to watch. Then there's a BOOM and everyone looks up to see their watch helicopter explode. Through the confusion, Rose breaks free from Shiva and Slade jumps in shooting at everyone. Odysseus asks how. Bronze Tiger said that you were dead. I saw it in his mind. And Slade says, sorry. He's actually working for me. He just doesn't realize it yet. Odysseus gets back up, slashing away at Slade, throwing the mask off. And Slade says, I would like to keep my eye this time. Rose and Shiva begin fighting, and suddenly somebody picks up Jericho before Rose can stomp them. Seeing a chance, Shiva jumps in to kill, and then is suddenly shot in the butt. As Harley tells her, you owe me one. Slade gets back up, and Odysseus tells him, you're not my son. He was a middle-aged, white-bearded, one-eyed killing machine. Slade shouts, I'm Slade Wilson. I'm Deathstroke the Terminator. The ground begins to rumble as a giant spike pushes through the ground, piercing into Odysseus. And suddenly, Bronze Tiger's claws stab through Slade's back and out of his chest. He tells him he swears he's gonna kill him this time. And then a voice tells Bronze Tiger to heal. Victor walks up holding a phone telling him, I'm sorry that I'm late. Jericho then shouts for Rose to calm down, and she shouts that she doesn't trust anyone here except Jericho. Everyone else needs to die. Jericho then shouts that there's been enough violence and death, and with a blast of green light, no one knows what happened. 
A little while later, Slade wakes back up in a bed with his wounds treated, and then he sees Kendra, as she has come with an offer that he once again can't refuse. She promises him money, weapons, resources, and a whole fresh new start. Slade tells her that she's gonna need to give him a minute to think about it, but actually, it's a lot less than that, cause someone made business personal, and he's not going to rest until they pay. Out somewhere in the South Pacific, Slade finds himself under attack from the Teen Titans. Though he can recover from most wounds, the one of losing his family is going to take time to heal, and the Titans will give him a much needed distraction. Through the fighting, the Titans then begin to combine their attacks, allowing Beast Boy to strike as a panther, cutting away at Slade's shoulder. Suddenly though, the Titans begin to fade. In the distance, Victor Riaz appears, asking if the neurosensors and pain transmitters are functioning at peak efficiency. Victor Riaz is the leader of the mercenary group known as the Dead Bastards. Since their last run-in, Victor has provided Slade with a place to live and train, and as the two of them discuss the equipment, Slade hears a clanking sound coming from the outside. He goes outside and a voice tells him that the High and the Mighty of the Pantheon will have much need for his lethal talents. Should he aid them, he will be amply rewarded, and then gold coins begin to shower from the sky. Slade draws his gun, stating, I don't like games. So either we talk face to face, or I'm going to play for you a little number that I like to call Hell on Earth. The voice says, very well, but I will present you with a gift. The light shines and strikes down, revealing a sword. And the voice says that this is the sword which he, Hephaestus, forged for him. Slade asks, what is he supposed to do with it? And through the swirling light, Hephaestus steps out, stating, you must kill a god. A short while later, Slade's body is thrown around the island as the sword flies through the air. Hephaestus says that he must master the powers of the God Killer's sword, or he will surely perish. However, this isn't an issue of mastering the sword. It's the fact that the sword changes in shape and weight, making it very difficult to consistently wield. Through the trees, a loud roar can be heard, and the creatures begin to attack. Slade swings the sword, cutting through them with ease, and all the while, Slade begins to think about how he can feel the power of the sword burning through his veins. It feels like it just wants to kill. As the last creature is cut down, smoke washes over the battlefield, and Hephaestus says, You're progressing well. And Victor says, It's time to move forward at our target. Not long after, Hephaestus drops Slade off on Themyscaria, Paradise Island. He explains that the target is the Titan Atlaptus, the god of immortality. He was exiled eons ago into the depths of Tartarus, and the sword will help locate the hidden entrance. Slade then says, Imprisoning wasn't enough. Now you want him dead? Hephaestus tells him, Actually, I'm just acting on behalf of another who believes the Pettis, its existence, represents a threat to the Pantheon. However, there will be no further questioning regarding that. Now it is time for you to go and be swift, because the Amazons here do not take kindly to those who invade their lands, in particular, those of male persuasion. Slade hurries through the forest until he finds the entrance to Tartarus, but as he breaks the chains on the door, the protectors of the area lunge out. It doesn't take long for Slade to cut down the protectors, but what Slade notices is that the sword goes where it wants, like it's controlling him, and that he doesn't like. As Slade goes deeper in, he sees the statue of Lepetus, and Hephaestus says that this is isn't what he was told would be here. Slade then says maybe he's just hiding inside of it, and Hephaestus tells him, we must leave at once. But just then, the eyes begin to glow from the statue, and Slade says, see, he is in there. He lunges forward, striking down the statue, and as it crumbles to pieces, everything begins to shake. The pieces fly in all directions, escaping Tartarus, and then a voice calls out asking, do you know what you've just done? Slade says, no, and he turns to see Diana, who tells him, you just unleashed a force that will destroy Themyscaria, now surrender or die. Slade sees that look in Diana's eye, and she doesn't look too happy with what he just did, and with him being set up, he's not too happy either. Diana strikes down, asking if he knows what he just did, and Slade says, yeah, I screwed up. She attacks, telling him that what he destroyed was no mere statue, it was the vessel for Lepetus, one of the most destructive forces to ever walk, and Slade just unleashed him. While the two continue fighting, the Onyx Stone that escaped Tartarus begin to take shape into an unholy army. Diana punches Slade out of the cave, demanding to know who was it that hired him to destroy her island. And he tells her, that doesn't matter. Right now, we both want the same thing, to kill Lepetus. She shouts, asking what kind of an arrogant mortal thinks he can simply kill a god. Slade kicks her off, stating, I can and I will. Now stand down, this fight isn't with you, but it sure as hell can be. She jumps up, grabbing a tree out of the ground, telling him to fight. And as she attacks, the sword knocks her down and returns back to Slade. He tells her, I'm sorry about that. The sword kind of has a mind of its own. And Diana realizes that that sword must come from Hephaestus. She demands to know why he would have it. And Slade just says that he thinks 
She just answered her own question. The battle continues as the missing parts of Lepetus begin to gather around from the corners of the island, only to be brought back to Lepetus' holding tree. Soon the Amazons gather around Diana as she continues beating down on Slade until a voice tells them to stop. Both look up to see Hesia, and Diana punches him one last time. Moments later, light begins to shine as Slade finds himself wrapped up in Diana's lasso. And after learning how and why he is here, Diana says it seems that he is just a pawn in a game for someone very powerful. Regardless of him knowing it or not, he had released Lepetus and is here being banished from the island. Slade says, not until I do what I came for. I will finish it. Diana tosses Slade his helmet and tells him that he thinks he can kill a titan by himself. He's more foolish than she thought. Lightning then strikes in the distance, and the voice of Lepetus shouts, All of this bloodshed has made me thirsty. Slade asks if that's the guy, and Diana tells him, You wanted to kill a god. Now's your chance. Soon, Lepetus and his onyx army surround everyone, and Slade and Diana attempt to attack it head on. Lepetus releases a powerful mental blast and shoots the two of them into the ground, breaking through a type of glass. The two look up, and Slade says, What the hell was that? And Diana tells him, He's not far off from that statement. They both look around, and Diana mentions that this fiery pit is a manifestation of Lepetus' powers. They must find their way back. But before they can look for a way out, creatures begin to crawl, swarming around them. The two begin cutting and slashing their way through the monsters, but the more that they cut them down, the more of them just get back up and replace them. With their backs together, Diana asks, what does a man like Slade think of in his last moments of life? And he tells her, those moments aren't today. When that day comes, it'll be my own damn business. The creatures start to gather, and then suddenly they all disperse, running away from them. And a loud grrrr can be heard, and a giant creature made of body starts to walk towards them. Diana points to the portal behind it, stating that that will bring them back to their world. And they both make a break for it, running at it. They leap off the cliff down to the portals, and as they get closer, they can feel something pulling them apart. Each of them are being pulled by different portals. Slade looks around and sees that he's in Istanbul, but this was all many years ago. He then notices Hesia sitting at a table waiting for him. She asks if he remembers that they were here together, and he tells her yeah. She then motions behind him and asks if he recognizes them. On the next table over, Rose and Jericho sit, and then several men jump out of a van into the street. Slade runs over telling them, you can't be here. And Rose tells him, she can't leave. She's eating her ice cream. And Hesia tells him, it's too late for that. It's happening. The men open fire, and Slade quickly flips the table over, providing cover. Once the firing stops, Slade jumps from behind, firing back, and he manages to kill a few, but he's struck in the arm. He walks back telling Rose and Jericho to get away from that man, but first he's gonna tell them who he is before, and Lepetta stomps him. Or what? You're gonna kill me in front of your children? Slade begins pulling the kids away, and Lepetta says that they will grow to hate you. And Slade tells them, cover your eyes, and they jump off the cliff. Slowly, Slade begins to wake back up, asking where they went, and Rose tells him that they are here. Elsewhere, Diana also wakes up, and what she sees is her mother. Rose and Jericho start shouting, stating that he destroyed their lives. He's nothing but poison to them. And Hippolyta starts telling Diana that she is dead because of her. She was a failure of a daughter and a failure as a warrior. Diana stops her, stating that that is enough. She's finished with this game, and she tells her to be gone. As the illusion fades, Diana can hear something else. She sees Rose and Jericho beating down on Slade. She grabs Rose, telling him, This isn't them. This is all of Hedis. And then the illusions disappear, and Diana says that together, they will survive. And Slade says, Together, we'll fight. The two go back to cutting through the creature surrounding them, pushing their way back to the creature made of bodies. They strike down on it, causing the body to fall apart, and through it, they jump through the portal. But when they look around, they see that they are back on Paradise Island, just as Lepetus is slaughtering the Amazons. Slade and Diana quickly jump back into battle, and Lepetus continues ripping through the crowds, killing everything around him. But as the battle rages on, Slade sees Lepetus beginning to escape, but him escaping would make no sense. Slade chases close behind him, and then Lepetus tells him, Through a mortal, you possess a sharp strategic mind. So how about you follow me? I can grant you great power. Slade tells him, Negotiation? That's cute. Maybe you're just afraid of this. And Lepetus laughs and punches Slade. As his body flies, Lepetus says, This is only a minor delay. Don't worry, my beloved. Love it. The world will soon be once again ours to rule, my lovely sister. He releases a powerful blast, decimating everything on the ground, and Diana jumps towards him, sword ready. As she gets close, he grabs her out of the air, tossing her away. He then flies down into a hole that he created, and Slade notices Diana falling. He runs over to catch her, but then something else flies past him, knocking Slade away, telling him to get away from her. Clark floats down, stating, I know what you are, and right now, you better tell me what's going on. Slade grabs the god killer, telling him, I fight with the other guy. 
unless you want it to be you. The two go back and forth, hitting and knocking each other around. And just as Clark flies back in, the God Killer changes form, wrapping around Clark. Slade says this doesn't have to go any further, and Clark bursts out of the restraint, shouting, Yes, it does. They both begin exchanging blows, and as Clark holds Slade by the neck, Diana runs in telling him to stop. She tells him that Slade is not the threat here, though he will pay for his crimes later. Right now, he's helping with the real threat, Lapetus. The ground begins to explode with fire, and out comes Lapetus laughing. <laughs> As he holds a spear, telling them, Behold the future. With the mighty piercer, no god or mortal can oppose my ascension. Clark rushes in, stating that he'll handle this, but Lapetus blasts him away with the piercer's power. Soon the volcano begins to erupt, and Clark says, I'll handle the breach. And Slade says, Lapetus will be all mine then. Slade runs in, slamming down on the piercer, and he tells Lapetus that it might be the sword telling him this, but he can feel that he's getting frustrated. Why hasn't he a titan been able to kill a mortal that dare defies him. Lepetus tells him, We are merely savoring the moment. Energy from the piercer starts to radiate and take the shape of a woman. Slade asks, Who's that? And Lepetus shouts, You will not speak to her. He can feel it now, though. The rage building inside of Lepetus. So Slade goes on, asking, Who is she? A mother? A wife? A mistress? Lepetus shouts, I will kill you! And Slade uses that brief moment to strike, swinging the sword down, hitting the shaft, cutting through it. The life force of Lepetus' sister begins to fade, and his rage continues to grow. He charges at Slade with that rage, and Slade strikes again, piercing into him. At that moment, the Onyx army begins to crumble as Slade pulls out Lepetus' heart. As everything begins to settle, Hephaestus tells him, Congratulations. You've done what no other mortal could do. Still holding the sword, Slade tells him, you're going to answer some questions for this mortal who isn't done killing. Who ordered this? Hephaestus sighs and tells him, it was Apollo, my dearly departed brother. In the event of his death, he wished that Lepetus be killed as well as a safeguard to the Pantheon. However, an anonymous source within the Pantheon revealed to him that it was an elaborate trick to free Lepetus to unleash his vengeance. So in a manner of speaking, my brother was selfish, and if he was to cease existing, he wanted the same fate for his family. Quite touching, really. However, speaking of the Pantheon, figures begin to form around Slade and he asks, What is this? And Hephaestus tells him, Your judgment day, of course. Killing a titan is not a small thing. It disturbs the natural order. It necessitates a blood sacrifice from the one who took the titan's life. Off in the distance, Clark begins to ask what's going on and Diana tells him, It seems that Slade is getting what's coming to him. Slade then asks, If I refuse to submit? And Hephaestus tells him, You have two children. One of them would suffice. Slade says that he'll kill every last one of them before he lets that happen. And then he throws his helmet down asking, If you want blood. And he reaches to his face and he pulls out his eye, handing it over. Telling Hephaestus to take it or leave. Bell Reeve Prison is home to some of the most dangerous super criminals and many humans that the world has ever known. Escaping from Bell Reeve isn't a very easy task, and for Slade Wilson, he's doing the opposite. However, our story doesn't begin with Slade breaking into prison. It begins 36 hours before. After his job with the Pantheon and making quite a small fortune, Slade went back to training on Danger Island. There, his host and the leader of the Dead Bastards, Victor, informs him that there has been some activity at his daughter Rose's house. So the two of them head over to the control room and Slade watches a video feed of an attack at Rose's home. Within hours, Slade rushes over to the destroyed home and finds Rose's body laying on the ground. As he turns the body over, a wig falls off of the girl, revealing that it wasn't Rose. However, there's a note written on the young girl's shirt stating, We had a deal, Waller. Ring a bell? Looking at the note, Slade can think of only one person who would have set this up. Harley Quinn, which now brings us back to our current time. As Slade is getting closer to the prison building, he sets up a bomb in a duffel bag and tosses it before opening his parachute. Just before the bag hits the roof, it detonates a giant EMP shockwave over the building, stopping any incoming and outgoing communications. However, the EMP didn't just stop those. It also unlocked the electrical locks, holding all of the inmates in their cells. All of the inmates rush out, beating whatever guards they can get their hands on. All the while, Harley skips through the fight. As she sings to herself, Slade's hand reaches out and grabs her into the shadows. He slams her up against a wall and tells her, I got your message about Waller, so where's my daughter? Harley tells him, well, yeah, you did promise, remember? Tightening his grip, Slade tells her that he can promise one thing. 
She'd better start talking or else. Harley shouts, Fine, Mr. Cranky Pants, kill Waller like you promised, and I'll tell you where you can find Rose. As Harley holds out her hand to Pinky Swear, she crosses her fingers behind her back. The two begin to make their way to Amanda's office, killing everyone in their way. However, as the last inmate falls, Deadshot tells Slade that he's been dying to run into him ever since Russia, when he betrayed him. Over in Amanda's office, Amanda begins to get ready to evacuate her and her guards, and she hears a voice from the shadows calling to them. She tells Pruitt that he needs to get back to his cell before he gets hurt. And Pruitt tells them that he has a better idea, and two tendrils shoot out killing the guards. Just then, another tendril shoots out sticking to Amanda, and she slowly begins to lose consciousness. Back with Slade, Deadshot jumps out beating him, while Harley shouts, Fun! 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 Fight! 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 Slade and Deadshot start kicking and punching each other back and forth until Slade says, Look, I'm just here trying to find my daughter. Deadshot stops for a moment, and Slade goes on stating, Waller abducted her 36 hours ago, and Harley left me a message. Deadshot thinks about it and says, Harley was here 36 hours ago. Sounds like someone is playing you. From the water tanks down below, a wire shoots out, grabbing and pulling Slade down. Underwater, Black Manta pulls out a knife and tells him, It's payback time. As the two of them begin to struggle, Manta starts cutting into Slade. But as soon as Slade manages to throw Manta off, he begins trying to figure out how he can fight against Manta on his own turf. Manta kicks off the wall and he swims towards Slade, and just then, Slade has an idea. Using the force of Manta's kick, Slade uses his feet to kick Manta upwards and throw him out of the water. After Slade jumps out, the two of them get ready to fight again. But Deadshot says, Slade is here for his daughter. And Manta tells him that his daughter means nothing to him, and he cuts at Slade's shoulder. As the two of them go back at it, Harley notices a tink, tink, tink on the ground, and asks if anyone ordered a stun grenade. The grenade goes off with a bright flash, and the guards run in firing their guns. Slade grabs a hold of Harley while the guards take Deadshot into custody, and they begin their escape. Once they get away, Harley points over to where Waller's office is and says that it looks like we're not the only ones who want Waller dead. Slade jumps towards the inmates and opens fire on them, while Harley beats all of the others with a bat until everyone is finally dead. As Slade looks into Waller's office, he sees two dead guards, and Harley says that it looks like that Pruitt guy that calls himself Snakebite got here already. Suddenly, the sounds of a helicopter begin to fill the air, and the radio announces that government forces are here to re-establish order. All resistance will be met with lethal force. The government soldiers rush in, opening fire on all of the inmates, and then a voice tells Slade, What did I tell you? Slade and Harley turn back, and Selena Kyle goes on stating, You never want to stay at a party for too long. Selena joins in with Slade and Harley to fight off the guards, and Harley begins to ask, Are you two like an item or something? Selena says that it's strictly business, and Harley tells her that she better be careful hanging out with Deathstroke. You might end up in this crap hole. Once they're done with the soldier, Slade says, Tell me about this snake bite guy. And after throwing up in her mouth, just thinking about him, Harley tells him that he's got these snaky things that can shoot out of him with stingers on the ends of him. Waller couldn't use him for the squad because he's too unstable. And before she could figure out what to do with him, you kind of showed up. Just then, over one of the guards' radios, Snakebite sends out a message to the government forces demanding a helicopter or Waller will die. Slade tells everyone, let's go. Selena tells Slade that she's not down with this plan. When he hired her, he was not signing her up for suicide missions. But before she leaves, she will buy them sometime. As Selena runs back, Harley calls her a party pooper, and her and Slade begin opening fire on the oncoming soldiers. Once Slade and Harley get to the administration center where Snakebite's broadcast came from, they find nothing. Slade tells Harley to drop her gun and tell him where Rose is now, or I'm gonna shoot you in the face. Harley drops her shotgun, stating, Fine, I lied. When you told me about your missing daughter, I just played along with it. Can you really blame me? Before Slade can even respond to that, the wall explodes and more inmates rush in shouting, Give them Waller! Slade then says, How about I give you this? And he starts shooting them all. The dust settles and Slade looks around to find Harley. And she tells him, I'm over here with Snakebite. Without even questioning her, Slade tells Snakebite, We should come to an arrangement. I need information from Waller and I can pay. Harley says, this is boring, and she elbows Snakebite. Snakebite tosses her to the side and jumps after Slade, telling him, I don't have to answer to you. I have a higher calling. Snakebite shoots out his tendrils, and when they get in range, Slade just cuts them off and lunges back in. His sword pierces into Snakebite's chest, and then another tendril shoots into Slade's neck. After slicing off that tendril, Slade kicks Snakebite out from the explosion the inmates made. He then turns back to Waller, and he asks, where the hell is my daughter? She tells him since he'll either be dead or captured in a few moments, she may as well be honest. She has zero to do with Rose's disappearance, nor does she have any knowledge of who did it. But whoever it was, they do have impressive resources. Could also be the man that Snakebite was referring to. Soon the poison starts to take effect inside of Slade, and then a smoke grenade goes off. Slade manages to throw himself out of the building, and shortly after, he's picked up by Selena. Elsewhere, though, a man looks at the picture of the dead woman from before, and Rose. A voice says that she was her friend, and the man says, she was about to betray you, Rose. The man then asks, 
How did you know Harley wanted your father to kill Waller? Rose tells him that her brother Jericho saw things inside of Harley during their battle at Gotham Airport. The man then says, It was just the shiny object that we needed to distract Deathstroke, and now we will break him, and Deathstroke will die! Many years ago, when Rose was at the age of five, Slade used to take her down to Skid Row to show her what humanity really looked like. Though he wanted to protect her, he wanted her to learn to protect herself. These are just some of the thoughts that Slade thinks about when he's being tased by the guards at LexCorp in Metropolis. Once he is finally down, the guards report back that they have the intruder under control. At their command center, Mercy Graves informs them that they'll be sending additional personnel and make sure not to engage him further. However, being tased doesn't keep Slade Wilson down for long. As before the guards can even respond back, Slade gets up and he knocks them all out. The reason that Slade is even here in LexCorp is because Victor got some new intel that showed that Rose was being held here. Slade Wilson is still trying to bring his family back together. So he used a DNA scanner to track where Rose is, and Victor radios in to state that it seems that LexCorp isn't even making outside contact that they have an intruder. As the scanner begins to pick up a reading, Lex Luthor's voice comes across asking Slade, what are you doing in my building? Slade tells him, I'll be glad to explain it to you when we're face to face. We are more capable of defending ourselves from any outside intruder, including you. So meet the latest generation of Lexbots. Lexbots equipped with buzz saws come swarming out to charge straight at Slade. Some of the saws cut into him, but after grabbing a hold of one of them, he rides it into the others. Even though they have titanium shielding, there appears to be a crack in the armor, right at the neck joint. So Slade destroys the last Lexbot, and Mercy Graves appears asking, Do you know what you just cost, LexCore? Lex's voice comes back, Allow me to introduce you to Mercy Graves, my personal assistant and bodyguard. After knocking the gun away, Mercy kicks Slade into the wall, where a door suddenly opens. From the doorway out steps a gigantic mechanical suit, and Slade asks, What is that? Is that you, Lex? Mercy tells him, In an essence, it is. Lex is indisposed of at the moment, but his intellectual algorithm has been programmed into the suit's AI system. The Lex suit grabs Slade by the throat and tells him, The reason for your visit isn't important to me, but I cannot allow you to leave alive. The Lex suit starts punching Slade repeatedly in the face, and then it throws him off to the side. Slade throws a grenade, and after the explosion, the suit just stands there with a protective shell around it. Back at the control center, Victor tells Slade, Abort the mission! However, there's someone else watching this fight, and that's Rose. The man from before tells her, Do not look away. Stay focused on him until the very end. Back in the facility, the Lex suit fires a proton blast, causing a cave-in and sending Slade down to the lower levels. Through the rubble, Slade picks himself up, and then he sees a bunch of Gray Men with backward S's stepping out of their test chambers. Moments later, the Gray Men begin pulling and bending Slade. Victor asks what's going on, and he tells him, I'm currently getting the crap kicked out of me. Mercy calls out to him that he has breached the gestation room and caused a premature release of Lex's experiments. The Lex suit then says, They are unique clones. Their ultimate Kryptonian DNA makes them practically invincible. As one of the Grey Men throws Slade, he asks, Practically? Another Grey Man charges forward, punching Slade, and all he can do is fire his gun and hope to hold them back. Mercy asks, How exactly are they supposed to stop them? And the Lex suit explains, There is a theoretical plan to neutralize a mass clone release. That would mean all of them need to be released. As he's being choked, Slade tells them, You just have to release all of these. Bizarros? Sure, why not? Slade breaks out of the hold and he heads towards the computer to reverse the system's polarity, and Mercy runs over to unlock the remaining chambers. The chambers all begin to hiss as they open, and Slade continues climbing up to flip the switch. But nothing's happening. The Bizarro start to gang up and beat on Slade, and after he's thrown to the side, he sees the problem. One of the connectors was ripped out. He grabs a hold of the cable and he says, I'm gonna have to dock brown this. And he jumps up grabbing the exposed wiring. The electrical current sends a shockwave down and electrocutes all of the Bizarros. And through the smoking body, Slade then asks, Okay, so where were we? Mercy tells him that this doesn't make up for him breaking into the facility, and Slade tells her, That's fine by me, but judging by them not contacting the outside for assistance, I'm pretty sure you want to keep this whole situation quiet, considering I'm wearing a body cam. Mercy says, Fine, continue your search, but you won't find what you're looking for. Slade pulls out the scanner and continues searching until he arrives in the mailroom. The scanner shows a medium-sized box, and Slade begins to think that it's just large enough. He rips it open to find a comb with Rose's hair on it. Elsewhere, Rose begins to ask why is he being so cruel. The man says that he's trying to break him, because Deathstroke will die by the hand of justice. By the law, man! Back outside of LexCorp, Slade tells himself, Victor sold me on bad intel twice now. Therefore, Victor is a dead man. 
However, as Slade walks through the alley, a bullet shoots through his shoulder. He jumps behind a dumpster and he begins firing back, and then Victor appears shooting the same direction. Victor tells him that he just shot down the sniper. There's no need to thank him. And Slade tells him, okay, I won't. And he kicks the gun out of Victor's hand. He jumps on slamming Victor into the dumpster and he tells him, you sold me out. And Victor tells him, the intel was just bad. We're being set up and it's making it look like I'm the one doing it. A voice then tells him, I bet it's the same person who hired me. Slade looks up and sees Red Hood. And he tells him, if you're done beating up an old unarmed man, how about taking out someone else who can kick your ass? Slade tells him, I've heard about you, but right now I really don't have time for some punk trying to make a name for himself. Red Hood rushes in stating, I already made a name for myself, douche stroke. The two begin punching back and forth, connecting hit after hit, and after throwing each other into a few walls, Slade takes out his swords and Red Hood pulls out trash can lids. Slade slams down, crushing both of the lids and knocking Red Hood to the ground. He then lunges in for the final strike and Red Hood pulls out his guns, opening fire on him. As each bullet hits, Slade tells himself, that was stupid, stupid, stupid. I left myself wide open, but all three shots were not kill shots. That means that this kid is playing a game. Slade tells him, hurry up and finish me off. And Red Hood tells him, I wasn't hired to kill you, just hurt you. Slade tries to ask him, who hired you? And then the cops arrive. Red Hood fires a hook and escapes, and Slade begins climbing up the fire escape. Through the spray of bullets, Slade finally reaches the top of the building where Red Hood is standing. The two charge back at each other, and Victor shouts for him to get out of the way. A rocket flies down towards the two of them, and the blast knocks Red Hood out. Slade makes sure that Red Hood is still alive, which thankfully he is, and then he grabs a hold of the rope. Victor says, I got good intel that Rose is in Montana, an old mining place called Copper Cliff, and this time, we're going together. Slade punches him, telling him, thanks buddy, and he points a gun at the pilot telling him to head to Montana. A little while later, the sun begins to rise as Slade exits the helicopter in Copper Cliff. However, his healing factor is still maxed out for trying to control the poison from Snakebite. Victor jumps out telling him that he's coming, and as the two of them begin to walk through the deserted town out from one of the rooftops, Snakebite calls out to Slade that he isn't looking good. Maybe they should get him a wheelchair? Slade tells him that he's had hangovers worse than this, and then him and Victor pull out their blades. But before Slade can attack, Victor stabs Slade, and he tells him, I'm sorry. The money was too good to pass. While Snakebite and Victor close in, another voice tells him, you're gonna die by the hand of justice. Slade looks up to see Lawman and Rose, and Lawman says, you're gonna die by the hand of the Lawman and your dear daughter. Rose tells him, I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time. As Slade kneels before Lawman, he tells him, this is where Deathstroke will die. But as Lawman talks, Slade begins to recognize his voice. It's the voice of Wardell Chambers, an old war buddy five years prior. Wardell shouts at him, it's Lawman now. It's been a long five years since you left me to die on the battlefield. Slade thinks back and remembers Wardell being shot. And he says that he saw him get killed. Wardell tells him, you should have taken a closer look, because the KRA that we were fighting captured me and injected me with the metahuman blood that we were supposed to get back. But after months of their torture, he started to feel something growing inside of him, and after some time he was able to exert that power, make those who captured him do things. And after breaking free, he left a dead girl in Rose's house to lure Slade to Belle Reve, where Snakebite can tax his healing factor, and, well, the rest was just there to break him down. Rose adds that her father poisoned his children with his bloodline, but soon Jericho and her will be free of that forever. Slade asks, what was all of this for? Revenge? And Wardell tells him, not entirely. I'm currently working with a group known as the Nova Council, a group that targets metahuman criminals who use their powers for currency, like mercenary work. Wardell then points his gun at Slade. I'll even give you a fighting chance. Here's a knife. Back in the helicopter they arrived on, Red Hood begins to wake up from the blast back in Metropolis, and he sees Slade and Wardell fighting. As the two slash away at each other, Wardell manages to knock Slade down, and he stands over him, finally ready to kill him. But as the knife is raised, a gunshot goes off, shooting the knife out of Wardell's hands. Off in the distance, Red Hood yells, Yo, Deathstroke, get your ass over here and I'll provide some cover fire. Even though this isn't what Slade expected, he sure as hell plans on taking it. As Slade and Red Hood plan their next move, Wardell calls out to Red Hood, telling him, I hired you for a job. Red Hood pops over the gravestones and tells him, Well, the job's finished. This is my free time now. Red Hood fires away at Wardell and Snakebite, and as they dodge the oncoming fire, Snakebite sneaks around. Just before his tendrils can stick into Red Hood, Slade cuts down, cutting off all of the stingers. The two go back behind cover where Red Hood hears someone call out, Jason. Red Hood looks up to see Batman, and he tells him, this isn't your fight, walk away. So Jason gets up telling Batman, okay, and he walks away. 
While everyone watches Red Hood leave, Slade takes the chance and charges in, thrusting his sword into Wardell's chest. After pulling the sword back, Wardell says that this is just as he fantasized. Facing him! Rose watches and slowly her eyes begin to change from red back to normal. Wardell forces Slade down and just before cutting his head off, Rose tells him to get away from her father. Rose charges in at Wardell, shouting everything he said about Rachel betraying her was a lie. And Wardell says the link must be gone. Oh well. She shouts that she's going to kill him and he tells her, I don't think so. And he pushes his sword through her stomach. She falls to the ground, calling out for her father. And Slade gets up, breaking Wardell's arm. Rather than falling down, Wardell turns back and stabs Slade, telling him, The pain only fuels me. So both Slade and Rose lay on the ground, and Wardell raises his sword again. And then suddenly, the bodies disappear. While everyone looks around, Slade begins to ask, What's happening? And the voice tells them, It was me. Slade looks up to see Jericho and Raza Ghoul telling him that they have much to discuss. Eight weeks pass and Slade returns to Tibet after killing a few more of Victor Riaz's men. As he returns, Raz says that things would be so much more efficient if he would just accept his help. The League of Assassins could dispatch their entire organization very quickly. Slade tells him that he's paying him for temporary assistance, but he won't be in his debt. As the two of them walk into the training ground, Roz mentions that he used to see him as a potential successor. And now he has two extraordinary children. Maybe they could. But Slade stops him, telling him, I appreciate the compensated assistance, but my children are off limits. Elsewhere in the fortress, Jericho and Rose continue their training, but Rose begins to see images of Wardell. He tells her that her father must die, and she can still serve him by killing Slade. Rose shouts for him to get out of her head and swings her sword down. Jericho tells her to stop, and the image of Wardell changes. Slade catches her arms. Rose stomps and says that she saw Wardell. He can still get to her even here. And Jericho mentions that through the link, he looked into Wardell's mind and he knows where he is. And he knows that they are here. And he won't stop until they are both dead. Roz walks in telling them, Well, then you must strike swiftly for the sake of your children. Outside an old courthouse, Slade, Rose, and Jericho prepare for their assault. And Jericho mentions that Wardell knows they're coming. Roz says that they should have taken his offer and brought the league. But Slade tells him, We'll handle this within the family. Soon the three break into the compound and guards begin opening fire on them. Slade stands up, firing a rifle into the crowd, killing them. And then the three head inside. Jericho says that they need to be careful. The guards weren't their only defense. They have metahuman agents as well. The three agents jump out and Rose says that this will be good since she's done hitting all the wooden dummies. And then her and Slade begin ripping through them. The three stand as all the agents lay dead and a voice tells them, What a bloody mess you have made. Everyone looks over to see Wardell, snakebite, and a woman calling herself Mastassa. She tells them that they're trespassing on her place. Slade fires his gun and sees Mastassa change into mist while Wardell and Snakebite take cover, which means they're still solid targets. Wardell calls out that he sees they're all healed up, and then suddenly Rose finishes his sentence, stating, I wanted you to die by my hand, but this'll do. Rose's eyes then change as she begins striking down on Slade. Slade tells Jericho to break the link, and Rose says in Wardell's voice that it won't be that easy. You're too close. So in order to break the link, you're going to have to kill her. Slade says to use more force, and Jericho shouts, Forgive me, Rose! The mental blast knocks everyone away and starts to bring the courthouse down, and as the smoke clears, Jericho asks if Rose is. Slade runs over to Rose and tells him, She'll be okay, she's still breathing. And then a voice says, Yes, but she will die without my help. Roz says that he can save his daughter's life, but Slade will be forever in his debt. Slade asks how, and Roz holds out a small vial. He tells Slade that this elixir will repair her body. However, the effects will only be temporary, and she'll require a daily dose, provided by him. If not, she will revert to her current state. Slade tells him, she'll become an addict then, dependent on you forever. Jericho tells him that he was the one who did this. Do whatever you can to save her. Just then a helicopter arrives with Victor's reinforcements and Slade says, fine. I swear allegiance to you, Roz, and the League of Assassins. Roz tells him, very well. I will require your son's assistance though. Soldiers begin running in and Slade opens fire as they get close. And as they each go down, Slade moves on to the next group of soldiers, cutting and slicing into them. Back with Jericho, Roz gives Rose the elixir and tells Jericho to do it. Meanwhile, Slade hears a voice telling him that he should have brought more men. And Victor appears while Wardell and Snakebite begin to surround him. Over in Rose's mind, Jericho finds Rose on the beach of her home. She tells him that she's glad that he's here. Isn't it wonderful? It's the last moment of peace that she can remember 
before Wardell came. Jericho says that she won't have to worry about him again. Ra's al Ghul took care of that. Now let's go back so that she can be alive. Back in the real world, the fight between Slade and the soldiers begins. He manages to push Snakebite away, but him and Wardell begin beating down on each other. The two men punch each other back and forth, always coming back for one last hit. As Victor watches, he tells everyone enough of this. He will kill Deathstroke. While Slade and Wardell struggle over a knife, soldiers run up as Snakebite comes back. Tendrils begin to launch forward, and just as Slade dodges the attack, the Stingers land into the oncoming soldiers. Grabbing a hold of one of their rifles, Slade begins to open fire into the crowd, until all that stands is Wardell and Snakebite. Before he can fire, Mustacia floats and spraying Slade with a mist. He falls to his knees, and she tells him not to worry. It's only temporary blindness. She then tells Wardell to hurry up and kill him. Before he can, though, Jericho and Rose shout for them to get away, or they'll die where they all stand. Wardell tries to make a link between him and Rose, but she tells him that the mind powers won't work work anymore thanks to Ra's al Ghul. Victor tells everyone to clear out. They're gonna regroup back on Danger Island and Slade watches as they all leave. And all he can do is think to himself that this is now an all-out war. So after recovering and returning to Tibet, Ra's announces to the League of Assassins that they have fresh blood joining their ranks. Let them welcome Slade Wilson, Rose Wilson, and Jericho. Slade says, wait. They weren't a part of the deal. As the night begins to set, Slade tells Roz that he will not allow this. Jericho says that he did it to save Rose's life, and without him, Rose will die. Slade tells him that it wasn't their decision, they were being blackmailed. And Rose says, what difference does it make? They either die as warriors or they die by his enemies. At least this way they have a fighting chance. Slade then tells them that he never wanted any of this for either of them. They deserve better. But Jericho tells him that his blood flows through them. They just have to accept that he already has. Roz breaks up the conversation, telling everyone that now they must fight together and they will take Danger Island. A short while later, everyone loads onto planes to set out for Danger Island. As Rose takes her daily dose of the elixir, Jericho leans over to Slade, telling him that that elixir is not what he says it is. But before Jericho can go any further, a missile is fired and it hits the side of the jet. The jet comes crashing down, but through the rubble, Jericho says that he projected an energy field, and he saved who he could. The four continue on their own, making their way to the facility. Jericho stops an escape pilot, but Roz runs in and stabs him. Jericho says that he didn't have to do that, but Roz tells him threats need to be eliminated. Remember that. Outside the League of Assassins begin their fight with Wardell, Snakebite, and Mustacia. But back inside of the facility, Slade finally manages to corner Victor Riez. Roz says that they will take him prisoner, but Victor presses a button, opening up a trap door. Everyone runs outside to chase after him, and then they run right into the middle of the League's fight. Slade runs in, stabbing Mustacia, while Roz and Rose cut down the rest of them. Roz and the Lee begin to surround everyone as Slade finds Victor in the crowd. He opens fire with his gun, but after only a few shots, Slade cuts Victor's hand off. He then holds his sword, ready to kill Victor, and Roz shouts, No more killing! Everyone stops, and Roz tells everyone that they are defeated. They only have one chance of survival, and that is to swear allegiance to the League of Assassins. Mustacia is the first to swear, followed by Wardell, and then Snakebite. Victor begins to say it, but Slade stops him by stabbing his sword into Victor's chest. Roz shouts, Slade, you swore to obey Roz al Ghul! And Slade tells him, I also swore to kill Victor. Roz charges in with his sword, stabbing into Slade's arm. So Slade begins to fight him back, and he thinks about how Roz just used them to get his enemies into their ranks. The swords begin to fly back and forth, and after a quick trip, Roz knocks Slade to the ground. Before the fighting can continue, Jericho shouts for everyone to stand down or die. Back on the jet, he looked into Roz's mind and found that the elixir is nothing more than a powerful stimulant. Roz didn't save Rose from Wardell's mental grasp. He did! And now with their oath of allegiance based on a lie, he rescinds it. Rose says that she also rescinds hers, and Roz tells them, Very well, I will release you. But as he leaves, Roz says, May our paths never cross again. And Slade tells him, Next time I see you, one of us will die. Slade watches as the survivors from the Dead Bastards and the Nova Council fly off, and he came to a very hard decision. Rose and Jericho are better off without him. Rose looks at Slade and tells him that it looks like he's getting old, again. And he tells her that with this family, he's not surprised. So after they say their final goodbyes, Rose and Jericho leave the island. Slade decides that he's going to take Victor's escape boat and go wherever he wants. But he will go alone, taking only death with him, because he is Deathstroke, the Terminator. And there you guys have it. A fun little full story today. We started deep diving into some of our older playlists to figure out what stories haven't been covered yet. But if there's a storyline here on the channel that you feel needs the full story treatment, please let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll be hitting the next one up next Monday. Check back every Monday for another compilation video with one of our full stories. Thank you, and I'll see you next week right here.